Hello, the topic of this presentation is a survey on image manipulation techniques, adversarial attacks and its defenses. I am Swami Prakash, role number 1801 CA68 and I will be handling the first part of this presentation. So deep neural networks are great for problems related to image classification. That we have a set of classes and given an input image, we want to classify that image into one of those classes. So some neural networks have uh, achieved human competitive results and are very very accurate. But being ac accurate is only one part of the utility of the model. Like nobody has, uh, nobody told anything about the robustness of the model in this case. So if a model is not very robust, then it is susceptible to various adversarial attacks. An adversarial attack is a deliberate attempt to force the model into outputting a wrong classification label. Uh, the image manipulations techniques that can be used to generate adversarial samples the adversarial attacks and the defenses will be the focus of this presentation. To provide some background, deep neural networks like CNNs can be trained to classify images with a very good accuracy. During training phase, we provide the model with a lot of labeled data samples so that the model can learn the proper weights and biases values. Then after training, on giving a test image, the model classifies this correctly most of the time. That is, if the model is very accurate, it will perform well. But if the uh, designer of the model does not take in uh, does not keep in mind some uh, adversary trying to deliberately fool the model then uh, the model will not be very robust like think, uh, think of this picture of a pig which is correctly classified as a pig now we add some noise to generate another picture both these pictures are same to the human eyes but for a, a neural network it thinks that th this new picture is that of an airliner so let's see what are the motivation for performing such adversarial attacks and uh, and also uh, and why we need to make the models more robust so the neural networks are becoming more and more popular in various domains and neural networks are also used in some critical applications where failure can result in loss of life let's take example of a self driving car this is a stop sign commonly found on roads if the self driving car detects it and interprets it as a stop sign then uh, everything is fine but let's say this is a stop sign board with stickers stick on them this is a type of a physical attack and we will discuss uh, something more about it later so this uh, a neural network can fail to see if the car fails to see this stop sign then accidents may happen another example is a face detection mechanism let's see this pers person uh, 3d prints a specially designed uh, glasses and then wears them so now the face detection mechanism uh, is fooled into thinking that this person is same as the, this lady. So there, uh, here are some other examples also like minor perturbations in uh, this image can cause the hair to be classified as a disc and hummingbird to be classified as a hammer. So the code of this presentation is first we will discuss image manipulation and adversarial attacks and then my friend will discuss the defenses part. So first let's classify the attacks based on the extent of the knowledge the adversary has about the target neural network. So first category is of black box attack where adversary has no idea about the internals of the network. Uh, like he can only interact with the model in the query uh, uh, manner like he can give some inputs and observe the corresponding outputs. Second category is gray box attack where the adversary knows the at least the structure of the neural network. Like he may be knowing about the neurons or the number of layers and number of neurons but he does not know any of the parameters followed or activation functions. Here also he can try to uh, interact by giving inputs and observing the corresponding outputs. In white box attack the adversary has all the complete knowledge of the neural network. He knows about its architectures and all the parameters activation functions and etc. So to summarize, in zero uh, in black box there is zero knowledge, in gray box there is some knowledge, and white box there is full knowledge. So uh, in black box and gray box case, the adversary usually tries to prepare prepare a surrogate network. The surrogate network is prepared by observing input output uh, observations from the uh, original network. And uh, let's say if it is a gray box and has some extra structure information then he can use that in the surrogate network once the surrogate network is ready he can use that surrogate network to get some uh, adversarial samples in white box there is no problem like he has all the details of the models he can uh, literally clone it and then do the analysis on that 
now let's we uh, now let's try to classify the image manipulation techniques For, first technique is to add some noise to generate the adversarial image like this can this is done uh, uh, digitally so there are two uh, methods like we can try to perturb all the pixels like we take the picture of a bus add some noise and then we uh, fool the deal network into thinking that this is a picture of an ostrich <clears throat> here all the pixels have been perturbed second option is that to perturb only a only a few few pixels or only a patch of pixels this is called adversarial patch here we have taken an extreme example of one pixel attack where only one pixel is perturbed we will discuss about this further in our presentation second me uh, method is to add some object in the vicinity of the target object or to change the surrounding of the target object like this can be one example is as follows this is a picture of a banana correctly classified as a banana with a very high confidence now this is the same picture but some extra sticker has been placed here now th for this image the classifier thinks that is it is a toaster and it says that with a very high confidence third is the uh, structural illumination of the object it can be also treated as a kind of physical ob uh, attack but it is done for can be done from a distance we are trying to illuminate our uh, target object with a uh, with using a very structured uh, illumination to fool the network like uh, after structuring this the uh, network thinks that this is a speed 30 sign uh, last is that there are some natural adversarial examples also uh, which can uh, occur uh, natural naturally like this fox squirrel is described uh, classified as a sea lion and this dragonfly is classified as a manhole cover now let's see uh, at the uh, image manipulation and adversarial attack techniques first is the lbfgs algorithm which was the first proposed method for doing adversarial attacks here the adversary can literally choose his target label that he wants the dl uh, network to fool into next uh, he will take a sample image and then try to perturb it the basic intuition is that the uh, perturbation should be uh, at a minimum the perturbation should be such that the new sample image is uh, at a minimum distance from the original image and also the sample image gives gets classified as a uh, gets classified to the adversarial target label now but this optimization problem is intractable uh, see an image is a, a collection of many pixels now each pixel can be tweaked differently uh, and to a, a range of values now if we try to generate all those perturbations one by one then the total number of such cases will be exponential so the problem will become intractable so to uh, work around this uh, obstacle we modify this objective function a little bit to include this adversarial loss now this expression can be maximized using a line search method which is a gradient based method our next method is fast gradient uh, sign method which is efficient but an untargeted attack to generate adversarial samples and it relies on the elf infinity norm like the first one was a little generic like it could work with any lp norm but this one is uh, functions on l infinity norm and it runs for only one iteration so in one iteration for a given input sample it tries to uh, generate an adversarial sample by moving in the uh, steeper direction the inc direction of the steepest increase so again the intuition is to increase the adversarial loss so that the neural network is confused while training we try to decrease the uh the loss of the uh, network but here we are uh, deliberately trying to increase the this loss uh, by uh, using this uh, by moving in the uh, direction of the uh, gradient like here gradient is found with respect to the in input and not with respect to the parameters of the model uh, it is with respect to the uh, input text So the main intuition is that uh, if we take a jump uh, good enough, then we may uh, try to make land into the uh, region of some other class. Like let's say this is a region of a panda p, and this is a region of the gibbon g, and we are here uh, at x. So if we take a good direction and increase, we may cross it into uh, we may take a jump good enough to cross it into the other region. 
so we will see an example related to this like uh, this is a panda uh, with classified with the as a panda with 57.7 confidence and we add a noise found by using this fgsm method now the resulted image which is again not uh, indistinguishable to the human eyes is classified as a given with 99.3 percent confidence so now the third uh, meta or these methods bim and pgd are built on top of the fgsm method like bim method is a generalization of the fgsm method in the fgsm method we were only uh, doing one iteration but we may not get a good adversarial sample in just one iteration so the attack may just fail or the perturbation may be too obvious like the far, like farther from the original sample so we run multiple iterations of the FGSM method, but we also have to take care to use smaller step sizes and clip the updated adversarial sample into a valid range. So this is the basic equation like the at t plus one iteration, we will take the th value at the th iteration and add, uh, and add alpha into sine of this uh, gradient with respect to the input text. Here alpha is a hyperparameter. So many iterations help us to achieve an adversarial sample that is very close to the original sample. Uh, now talking about PGT, it is a, for a generalization of BIM, which uses a projection operation instead of the clip operation. Like here it is using clip operation, PGT will use projection operation. Next is the momentum iterative attack, which is inspired from the momentum optimizer. Here the basic method is same as the of the BIM method but the gradient is calculated more carefully so just as the momentum optimizer try to compute good values of the gradient so we converge faster it also helps when we are trying to find an adversarial sample so here we will uh, take the same uh, expression we will like the t plus 1 sa sample will depend on ts and then we will add the gradient of sine of this gradient so gt plus 1 will be obtained from the value of the past gradients also but the weightage of the past gradients will decay exponentially like this is an example if we do a simple uh, bim iterations then the value may con converge uh, by uh, by taking a wild right and left swings but if we use mo uh, momentum iterative attack the convergence may be faster and, and more uh, smooth and streamlined now next is the GAN based attacks. GAN stands for Generative Adversarial Networks. Now Generative Network is a neural network which can take uh, a lot of input data and learn about its distribution uh, in an unsupervised manner. After learning about the distribution, it can generate a new sample data that are derived from the same distribution. Now in Generative Adversarial Networks, there are basically two neural networks which, which are competing in a zero-sum game. Here, generated network is uh, present and uh, another discriminated network is present. <clears throat> the task of the generated network is to generate uh, a, a new sample based on the uh, sample uh, based on this learns distribution, and then the discriminated network tries to discriminate between the a real sample and a generated sample. So the target of the generated network is to fool this discriminated network. That is to generate a very good fake samples. But discriminated network also wants to become very good in detecting uh, in discriminating between real sample and generative sample. So it is like a zero sum game between these two. After the training, the, gener uh, the generated network will be able to generate uh, new samples from the distribution that it has learned from the input uh, uh, input data. So for doing the attacks, the generator is trained to learn the adversarial distribution by maximizing the target adversarial loss j theta x dash y and the gn loss so the once the generator is trained it can generate adversarial perturbations efficiently for any instance earlier like the previous four methods we saw they were taking an input image and then trying to find good perturbations or good noise to add to that but here once it learns the adversarial distribution uh, given any input image it can very efficiently find the corresponding or, or good adversarial perturbations so to train this or learn the adversarial distribution, some information is needed and it works well in semi-white box and semi-black box setting. And now next is a very interesting one pixel attack. Till now we have seen attacks that modify almost or perturb almost all of the pixels of the given image. Now this is uh, modifying all the pixels 
results in a very high attack uh, success rate but one problem can be that the perturbations may, may may become too obvious and even a human may be able to uh, tell that a sample has been perturbed and it is different from the original sample so here the uh, condition is that we are allowed to uh, perturb only one pixel from the image like here all the in all these examples only one pixel has been perturbed and then the ship has been classified as a car a horse as a frog and so on now in this image non in these images the one pixel is obvious but also note that these images are of very low resolution in a normal image uh, modifying one pixel won't be very obvious so there is a trade off also uh, but the main trade off and that is the uh, efficiency of the attack it is not very high if we compare to the other methods like fgsm uh, efficiency of the attack means that the generated sample may not fool the network uh, majority of the time or it may not be successful most of the times uh, this one pixel attack can even work in black box settings and is applicable to different types of networks uh, it also works uh, as a targeted attack uh, the main uh, or the different technique that is used here is of differential evolution to find the optimal perturbations like earlier we were using gradient based methods but now we will use a type of evolutionary algorithm the differential evolution method works even when the uh, function is not differentiable now we will try to slightly uh, explain more about this method so first let's say we are trying to optimize a function in two dimension of variable x1 and x2 here are uh, its count contour lines in 2d First, we will initialize few points, like let's say we initialize 9 points from 0 to 8. We also index them from 0 to 8. Now, the number of iterations will be equal to the number of points. Let's say in the 0th iteration, we select 2 random points. Now, this is the selection process. We select 6 and 8. Now, like a crossover operation, we will find their difference. So, xr1 minus xr2. Now we will select a third, um, po a third point randomly. We select point 4. Now we will combine the difference that is xr1 minus xr2 and then, then this randomly selected point to get a new point u0. This step can be seen as mutation. Now the new, uh, the new the individual obtained and the original 0th individual because we are in the 0th iteration, the, both of these will be compared. One with the lower, lower objective function value will be retained and the retained and the other one will be thrown away now this process will similarly continue for ni ni uh, nine iterations and at the last the point which has the lowest objective function value will uh, be picked as the optimal point now here is another example in 3d space like let's say this is the uh, surface of the fun function here is clearly is the global minimum now here are the initial initial random points that have been taken in the population after few iterations, after a good number of iterations, the population will converge around this global optimal point. So this will find a, a good optimum point. Uh, another method is optical adversarial attack. Here, uh, it is a little different from uh, previous cases. Like we don't have to uh, literally go near to the object and can even attack from a, a good distance. So as the name says, we uh, use some optics here like we flash or, or we f uh, flash some light on the target object and illuminate it in such a way that the model is confused here we have illuminated in a very structured manner like some places are dark and some are light so that a neuron uh, neural network thinks that this is a speed 30 sign so uh, accidents may happen instead of stopping the car will just uh, keep on uh, going so we don't even need to touch the target object. This object can be performed from a distance also. Uh, another benefit of this approach is that it is a meta procedure and can be applied to any existing adversarial loss, loss maximization method. So the uh, up till now we have seen that to perform a conventional digital attack, we take a image, base image, and then we try to add some noise to it. To find the proper uh, perturbation, we try to maximize the adversarial loss. Now, but in this approach, what we do that our base is a uniform uh, illumination. We try to find such noise to add to this uniform uh, illumination such that we uh, uh, maximize the adversarial loss. So for this image, you, you can see that what 
uh, noise it has uh, found to add to this base of uniform illumination. So uh, it, it is not uh, simple. Uh, it is not that very simple that uh, flashing a torch will also confuse the neural network. Uh, a project, a sophisticated projector is needed so that it can illuminate the object in the desired way. Also, it can be a little difficult, like uh, projecting uh, a light uh, on an object from a distance. Uh, can also be affected by external factors or some external light sources, but this has been uh, but it has been shown that this works Now we will discuss some defense mechanisms and this part will be handled by my friend Wamsi uh, These were some differences for the different types of attacks. Thank you